Hello everyone, welcome to the DIP medical videos. I am Dr. Bharat Kesi and today we will be continuing the MCQ series of ENT. Topic is air. The question is perilymph contains option A sodium, option B potassium, option C magnesium, option D chloride. The correct answer is sodium. We know perilymph is the fluid which fills the bony labyrinth. Okay, perilymph fills the bony labyrinth. But perilymph is actually an extension of CSF. Look at this figure from the subarachnoid space. The CF, CSF uh, drains through the cochlear duct into the scala tympani. Into the scala tympani. Okay, so perilymph is actually a continuation of CSF. Hence, and we know CSF is an extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid is rich in sodium. Okay. Extracellular fluid is rich in sodium. So, perilymph contains more amount of sodium and less amount of potassium. Okay. If the question would have been endolymph contains, then we could have taken potassium. Okay. Potassium potassium next question the site where endolymph is seen option a scala vestibuli option b scala media option c helicotrema option d scala tympani the correct answer is scala media okay endolymph is a membranous is in the membranous labyrinth okay endolymph is present in the membranous labyrinth this is endolymph okay this is endolymph the dark color okay but perilymph is present in the bony labyrinth the lighter one okay lighter one is perilymph okay lighter one is perilymph hence this scala vestibuli scala tympani and the interconnection helicotrema which are the parts of bony labyrinth they contain perilymph okay they contain perilymph but this inner part is media okay this arterial and sacule and semicircular canal okay they contain endolymph i hope this is clear okay in this picture this is a helicotrema okay the fluid which has high potassium okay and low sodium contain is is it csf or perilymph or endolymph or pleural fluid correct answer is endolymph because endolymph is intracellular content so it is high in potassium okay high in potassium it is secreted by the extra vascularis which is rich in potassium okay and this csf perilymph, perilymph and the pleural fluid these are rich in sodium Okay, rich in sodium. Endolymph is rich in potassium. Okay. Cochlear aqueduct connects internal air with the subarachnoid space, connects membranous cochlea with the vestibule, connect contains the endolymph, connects endolymphatic sac to the subarachnoid space. The correct answer is connects internal air with the subarachnoid space. We know cochlear aqueduct connects cochlear part okay this internal ear cochlear part to the subarachnoid space so the option a connects this internal ears cochlear part to the subarachnoid space where there is a csf uh, coming to the discussion this internal this is the internal ear okay this is the internal ear this is a part of the cranium okay subarachnoid space and this internal ear communicates the cranium by two openings okay there are two openings one is this cochlear aqueduct okay and there is vestibular aqueduct okay vestibular aqueduct now option b connects membranous cochlea with the vestibule this membranous cochlea is a closed space okay closed space so there is no connection this is wrong okay contains endolymph no it contains perilymph it contains perilymph 
because cochlear aqueduct this is cochlear aqueduct it's through the subarachnoid space it drains the CSF to the skeleton pen where there is a perilymph okay next option is connects endolymphatic sac to subarachnoid space this endolymphatic sac is a blind pouch this is also closed so there is no connection you can see in this picture this is an endolymphatic sac it is a blind pouch right this endolymphatic sac is responsible for the absorption of absorption of endolymph okay endolymph okay and it is extradural and it is extradural next question the most potential route for the transmission of inner ear infection leading to meningitis is option a cochlear aqueduct option b endolymphatic sac option c vestibular aqueduct option d hiatal fissure so correct answer is cochlear aqueduct okay cochlear aqueduct this is the cochlear aqueduct is the route okay through which if there any infection in the inner ear then this infection can transmit through this route and it can reach the meninges okay meninges pyometer arachnoid matter dura matter okay it can reach that the endolymphatic sac this is a blind pouch blind pouch so the infection cannot transmit to meninges through the endolymphatic sac vestibular aqueduct it's a bony canal it's a bony canal around utriculosacular duct and the endolymphatic sac okay endolymphatic sac it's a bony canal and hiatal fissure is a tympanomeningeal fissure which obliterates by 26 weeks of period of gestation okay if persistent it can lead to connection between the CSF and middle ear CSF and middle ear okay infection of CNS spreads in the inner ear through option A cochlear aqueduct option B endolymphatic sac option C scala media vestibular aqueduct it's the same question the answer is cochlear aqueduct it was asked in AIMS 2010 okay 